All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, I am so excited to uh, share the platform with our bird brain partners. Um, but real quick, my name is Whitney Miller. I am the Chief Operating Officer with Illinois Digital Educators Alliance. Uh, we've been um, partners with bird brain for a number of years, and we're always happy to um, invite them in and hear from them. They always uh, share some very fun um, items with us. So with that, I'll turn it over to Sarah, and she can introduce herself. Hello, everybody. I'm going to introduce myself in just a slide or two, but first I'm going to welcome you to our robot open house where we'll be exploring STEM in every subject with bird brain technologies. And we are really going to structure this like an open house, like a school day. So um, I hope that you are ready to make your way through some academic content because uh, here we go. If you are anything like me and you like to follow along while a slideshow is happening, here's everything you might need. Jen is going to send the link to the chat so you have that if you'd like to follow along. If you want to follow along on a secondary device, this QR code will take you to the slideshow. If you'd like to follow along on your primary device, there is the link right there. Follow along with us so that you can join as we are going. There's lots of goodies and links to click and things that you can try out. So if you like to follow along, go for it. I'll leave this up for a few seconds. And now I can introduce myself. My name is Sarah Fitenry. I am the one on the left. My hair is a little more purple than pink right now, but you can still tell that it's me. I am the learning and community manager for Bird Brain Technologies, which means I'm the lucky one that gets to work with teachers and build community and awareness about our education materials and our online communities. And um, it is just the coolest job in the world. So I am thrilled to be here talking to you today and our Woman behind the scenes running the chat is Jen. Jen, can you introduce yourself? Hey, everybody. Um, I'm Jen Norton. I'm the product coach for Bird Brain Technologies. So I am responsible for a lot of the tech support and classroom integration. So I am happy to be tech support for Sarah today. Thank goodness. Somebody's got to be tech support for me, especially working with something new. So we are really excited to be here talking to you. And just like true teachers, because Jen and I have both worked for a long time as teachers, we are going to share today's schedule with you. We are going to start in homeroom together. We're going to make our way to math class. We're going to visit world language class. Then we're going to go to reading language arts. We will have a nice little break and a chat for recess. Then we're going to go to music, to science class. We will end our academic day with some art and design. And finally, make our way back to homeroom in order to connect and reflect before we head out. Any questions about this schedule before we dive in? Okay, well, in that case, let's go right to homeroom. Any educators out there know that homeroom is a time to build community and to connect with each other. So it's the perfect time for you to, me to tell you a little bit about us at Bird Brain. At Bird Brain, our mission is simple. We want to inspire deep and joyful hands-on learning for all students. Here's a little glamour shot of all of our products. And we will be spending some time with the Finch robot and the Hummingbird Robotics Kit today. So I will introduce you to them on our next couple of slides. But hopefully that mission tells you a little bit about who we are looking to inspire deep and joyful hands-on learning for all students. You're going to see a lot of the Finch Robot 2.0 today. It's a cute little robot, isn't it? This is our robot that is ready to program and to show your students a physical representation of their code right out of the box. So this little robot has all sorts of features packed into it, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. But one really interesting thing about the Finch Robot 2.0 is that 2.0 next to its name. The Finch Robot original was released in 2010, which is pretty early in terms of educational robotics. And it was used by teachers for 10 years. And then the Finch Robot 2.0 released in 2020 was improved and iterated on with 10 years of teacher 
feedback. So this robot includes features and design that all teachers wanted and asked for. It was truly created by our teacher and education community. Here's just a few things that the Finch robot can do. We'll start with the outputs. The Finch robot, of course, has two wheels. That is how it moves. It's a very mobile little robot. It has LEDs in the beak and the tail, and it has the LED array in the micro bit, which plugs into the tail. We are very proud to be a part of the micro bit ecosystem. There is a buzzer inside the Finch robot's body. There is a marker holder, so you can use it as a drawing tool. And there is a plastic brick adapter, which is a very fancy way to say that, yes, you can build on it with Legos, and it is so cool. So all of those outputs are ready to go when you take your Finch out of the box. And as for inputs, on those wheels, there are encoders, so your students can track how many times wheels have turned. There are line tracking sensors on the bottom of the robot. There's that distance sensor on the front and light sensors in the body. And then as part of the micro bit, the Finch can use the compass, accelerometer, and buttons. So it packs a lot of features into that little inexpensive body. And we like to say that the Finch robot can be used for K through college because it is a truly versatile robot. Not only does it work with a wide array of devices from iPads and Kindles to MacBooks and PCs and Chromebooks, of course, but it also works with an array of programming languages. You can use the Finch with your earliest learners using icon-based programming. Here's a snapshot of our icon-based programming app called Finch Blocks. So your students do not need to be able to read or recognize text independently in order to program. When they are ready, they can move up to block-based programming. You can program Finch with Snap, with MateCode, or with Bird Blocks, our free app that's available for download at any time. And then when students are ready, they can graduate to text-based programming where they can program the Finch with Python and Java. And we have full libraries of lessons for Python and Java with the Finch robot as well. And resources with all of these different programming languages on our website available for free if that's ever something that you want to take a look at. So the Finch 2.0 truly is for our youngest learners all the way up through our most mature learners looking for a big challenge. It can be used by learners at all ages. So if our Finch robot is the robot that is ready to go out of the box and ready to program, our Hummingbird Robotics Kit is a little different. When I introduce this to students, I like to tell them that it is the guts of the robot. Because inside of that Finch, you have the lights, motors, and sensors that make up how a robot behaves. And here in the Hummingbird Robotics Kit, we have those same lights, motors, and sensors, but it's missing a body, and that is because the students get to create the body. The Hummingbird Robotics Kit is designed to be used with recycled craft materials, and it can truly make anything into a moving, sensing, interacting robot. The only limit is your imagination. What you're looking at here is the premium kit, and you can see it's got sensors and LEDs over on this side. We've got some wheels and those um, plastic brick adapters over here for the servos. And right here is the Hummingbird controller bit. This is where the micro bit gets plugged in and attached to power. And that would be the heart and the brain of the robot. So it can be a little hard to imagine what that looks like. So I'm going to show you just a couple of examples of what the Hummingbird robotics kit can make. So if we start all the way over on the left, every single creature in this garden was made and animated with a component, at least one, of the Hummingbird Robotics Kit. We've got that flower opening and closing with servos. We've got that praying mantis doing a little dance over here, flowers lighting up, butterflies moving. Those are all brought to life with the Hummingbird Robotics Kit. This galactic toss was an example of a probability math game created by a middle schooler using the Hummingbird Robotics Kit. When you toss something through the hole, if you are good enough to do that, which I don't know that I would be at least first try, it triggers a sensor, which makes the number go up on the micro bit right here. 
We have a still shot of a mythological creature that I was told was not exactly a dragon by um, a student who had very strong feelings about that. And the wings can move up and down and the mouth opens and closes. We've got some birds down here that can sing and lip sync a creature that's drumming. I wonder if anybody recognizes this diorama of a scene from a very well-known children's book over here, bringing some literature to life. Here is a robotic rover that someone created to look like their beloved puppy. And finally, here is our dragon. If you've ever seen us at a conference, you might recognize her. When you walk by, if you get too close to her nose, that's where her sensor lives. She'll snap at your hand. That's really fun to watch that happen to people as they walk by. So here are just a few examples of the interactive projects that can be created with the Hummingbird Robotics Kit. And I know I already said low floor, high ceiling with the Finch Robot, but it is just as true with the Hummingbird Robotics Kit. If you look closely at this scene from where the wild things are, it's really just printed paper and some cut out paper here and a boat that's programmed to move like this. Or you can go as complicated as creating a 3D structure or rover or multiple components tied together into one big there are absolutely no limits. It can be anything that you'd like. I would be remiss if I didn't mention our two newest products, Glow and Cube, parts of the Owlet Math Tools collection. And Owlet is a set of hands-on manipulatives that combine with digital apps to make abstract math concrete for grades K through five. We won't be talking much about Outlet today, but if you are curious about Outlet, please let Jen or I know. We could talk your ear off about Outlet all day. These new tools are so exciting, but we're going to be focusing mostly on Finch and Hummingbird. But I'm going to tell you that this is Glow over here, and Glow is part Etch-a-Sketch, part LED display, and all about making math make sense. And this is our little glow owl. And over here is Cube, a sensor-enabled tower that allows students to stack blocks and practice concepts like place value. Okay, speaking of math, let's head into math class. There are tons of different ways to incorporate robotics and STEM into math, and I'm going to show you just a few examples of those today. We have had some issues with sound, so if my sound is not working, I'll just talk you through what the videos are supposed to be. I know it is not as fun, but hopefully you'll still be able to get the gist. So I pulled just a few examples to show you, and we're going to start with one way to bring math to life for really any age is to animate a favorite math read aloud, like the classic circumference. Any math teachers here, have you ever used circumference or any of those picture books in your lesson. It's a whole series. They take these math concepts. I always think of circumference and the Knights of the Round Table because it's all about circles and radius and area. Maybe nobody's familiar with it. It's a very, very cool way to bring math and a read aloud together. And hopefully you are going to follow me to Twitter so that I can show you this lesson from teacher, teacher Ariel Jankert. Can you see it? Yeah. All right. I think I see a thumbs up. Thank you. And Mrs. Jankard says, King Lel asked the fourth graders to code a finch bot to travel through the obtuse mountains to warn the acute villages that the enemy is on the way. Students use knowledge of reflex and straight angles to code the correct path. So not only are they getting that engagement from having this read aloud during their math class, but then they're putting their knowledge of angles and programming to the test to have them move through the setting of the book. And I think you can probably tell that these kids are pretty engaged in seeing where their finch is going. They look pretty excited about those angles that they've made. If you're teaching angles, you might also want to explore them with the Hummingbird Robotics Kit. And here is one example of a way that you can bring angles to life using Hummingbird. This is a 3D creation here called a noisometer. So if the sound comes through, prepare yourself. It is called the noisometer for a reason. Did the sound work? 
No, I think I see some heads shaking. Okay, it's a gleeful student screaming as the um, noise emitter <laughs> goes up and down. And so in order to make this noise emitter, that student had to learn about angles and the way they go along with that sound sensor. How do you get that hummingbird, um, how do you get that servo to go up, just enough if it's not too loud, up a little farther if it's louder, and to go all the way into that red territory if it truly is too loud. And if you're interested in exploring more opportunities for angles with Hummingbird, we have a Hummingbird project all about it that tells you how to make the base of that noise emitter with the Hummingbird Robotics Kit, including the position servo, and that can be turned into a million different projects, but the basics are right there linked. You could explore the possibilities of using Finch with Math with our brand new Finch Math Mat, and I'm gonna embarrass Jen while she is here because Jen was our brilliant designer behind this Math Mat. This brand new product is to be used with Finch and it has truly precise math markings so that this can be used in order to practice number lines. This circle can be used for telling time. We've got markers here for finch jousting, which allows you to practice with distance and angles. There are lots of different opportunities in order to use this math with this mat with different math concepts. And perhaps my favorite part is that it is easily wipeable, so you can draw all over this map with washable markers and make it look like whatever you want, wipe it all down at the end of the day, and you're ready to start again. It also rolls up and can be stored in a closet, and it doesn't take up any space in your classroom. So this is a new product for us. So if you try out the Finch Math Mat, we'd love to know what you think. Another opportunity for incorporating robotics and STEM into math, you could use one lesson and one robot for all ages with a K through 12 activity like drawing shapes with Finch. There are two different links to different resources in this one bullet, and I'm going to show you both. If you'd like an overview of the way the Finch can be used for K through college, here is an overview of what this lesson might look like in kindergarten, first, second, third, all the way up through college introduction to computer science. So you can see the sample code here spans from icon-based programming all the way up to text-based programming. And then you've got a summary of the way that you might use this resource. Um, I kind of want to sit here and read to you because I think this resource is so impressive, but I won't. Instead, it is linked in the slide if you'd like to look at it. And I will show you another Drawing Shapes with Finch activity, which shows you the Finch in action with a marker in the holder. So you're challenging students to really know how many angles are in each shape, what each shape looks like. You've got to really understand the shape pretty well to be able to write a program to draw it. So this is a project that teachers love. Okay, so we have the read aloud, we've got angles with hummingbird, the Finch math mat, and drawing shapes with Finch. There are plenty more examples that I could give you, but instead, that bell is ringing, so I'm going to move you on to the next subject, unless we have any math-related questions before we go. No? Okay. Let's keep going. Not to Twitter. We don't want to go to Twitter. We want to go to world language. When you think of world language, you might not automatically think of programming and robotics, but our teachers... Our community have shown us that it is a really, really powerful tool. You could start by completing a familiar activity in a new language, like this video, which is from educator Laura Fleischer Proano. She challenged her students to do a very basic activity, creating a map of the school and figuring out what their day is going to look like, where they're going to move throughout the school, but to program and record the message in Spanish. You could use the Finch robot to tour a new country or continent. 
This student here, in case the sound isn't working, is taking us on their vacation through Central America, talking us through a little bit about what she'll do in each place. Her first stop is Colombia. She's moving down to Peru. She ends up in Brazil. So she gets to plan a vacation and learn about the culture in each different spot and is programming and using her Finch along the way. Now, both of these examples are in Spanish, but those are just the videos that we had ready. You can use the Finch robot for any world language class that you might be teaching or that your students might be in. And it's important to note that bird blocks snap and make code can all be translated into multiple languages. So this link here will take you to a Zendesk article from our help page that helps you to use our products in a language other than English. So it's got all of the details here for what you might need to run make code or snap or bird blocks in a different language. Let's go on. To reading language arts, believe it or not, we have so many incredible examples of using robotics in reading language arts that it was really, really hard to narrow this down. So please know that there are a lot of examples that did not get included in this page, and I hope that you'll go to our website and check out some other examples. If you're working with younger students or if you're working with older students and inspiring them to get involved with younger students, the Finch Tales lesson. It's a great way to explore story plot, elements, characters, and more. So I'm going to show you an example of the Finch Tales activity, which is retelling a well-known story. If any of you have ever taught elementary school or have a young person in your life, then you are likely familiar with Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. So this Finch robot is walking us through the plot. The bus driver has left. The pigeon is inching closer to that bus. It really, really, really wants to drive. If you could hear the sound, the pigeon is saying, can I drive the bus? Can I drive the bus? And when it gets close enough, those sensors go off and no, you cannot drive the bus. So a student needs to know about the character. They need to truly understand what's happening with the plot in order to retell the story in that way. And this doesn't have to be used for retelling a story, but if a student is creating their own story, it's a really incredible way for them to act it out and think through beginning, middle, and end. And that Finch is just a little puppet that's stuck in that marker holder with a popsicle stick. So it's that easy to create a character and to bring it to life using the Finch robot. You could bring setting and plot to life in a little more of an advanced way, like teacher Heather Fulbright did with her lesson here based on the middle school read Chasing Lincoln's Killer. Here is what she said. These middle schoolers at Jacob's Forks Jags coded with Finch robots the funeral procession of President Lincoln as a closing activity after reading Chasing Lincoln's Killer. Their coding skills are brain exploding emoji, starry eyed emoji. So proud of these students. So after reading the book, they put their knowledge of Lincoln's funeral procession and the setting of the book, which is critical to that story, to the test by programming their way through it on a map. A totally new way to see how students understood the story and whether they really took the concept and the information with them after they have closed the cover. You could teach characterization with an activity like our robot characters activity. And um, Jen, who is our Greek god, she's very knowledgeable, taught me that this three-legged dog is this three-legged. This three-headed dog is Cerberus. Um, I thought it was a three-headed dog from Harry Potter named Fluffy, but it is not. It is an important character from Greek mythology. And I know I'm showing you a monster here because I think that is so cool, but Say you're studying Greek mythology and you want your students to show their knowledge of Percy Jackson. They could create a robot based on Percy Jackson. And if we just think through the pieces that have to be involved in that, they need to know what Percy looks like. They need to understand his facial expressions. They need to understand the way that he might move. They need to know what 
scene they might place him in. They need to know who might be standing near him. They probably want to put him in some sort of pose from a scene that was really critical to the text. And so just by creating that one character, they're really having to show how well they understand the text. And this robot characters link will take you to an example of one of our lesson plans. If you're interested in bringing robot characters into your classroom, this lesson gives you everything you need to know. You've got overviews of the sessions and the learning goals. You've got your standards alignment here for Common Core, for CSTA, for the Next Generation Science Standards, and for ISTE. It gives you an overview of what you can do for each session, and obviously this is totally personalizable. You can take it and customize it any way that you'd like. It moves all the way through the sessions, and you've even got some information about common modifications and additional information if you need more about the Hummingbird Robotics Kit or about programming. So. We have more lesson plans like this one, but I wanted to show you what the project map or lesson plan for robot characters looks like that's available for free on our website anytime. I wish I had more time to show you the full video of this writing and robotics workshop. This is offered every year by an amazing teacher named Matt Fisher. Instead of reading a text, and studying characterization in that way, Mr. Fisher has his students write stories and create characters on the page and in their brains while they are also creating them with the Hummingbird Robotics Kit. So those students are so excited to write stories with these characters that they have created because they are seeing them come to life and act them out with robotics. It is such a dynamic and creative way to bring reading language arts to life. And this is a summer camp and you can see how thrilled these students are to be here. If you have more time, I highly suggest watching that full video on your own because the magic with writing in robotics is really cool to see. If you're interested in having your students show the way they can analyze and truly understand a text, the Hummingbird Robotics Kit can be an amazing tool for that as well with robot poetry. I'll show you two examples of robot poetry because I couldn't decide. Because we don't have sound, I, I'm thinking you might be able to guess what this one is. If you know it, send it to the chat. We have a spider. We have some rain, some sun, a very well known one. I would say that spider's not too large. You might even call it kind of itsy and or bitsy. <laughs> All right, it is the Itsy Bitsy Spider, and she has brought that poem to life using the Hummingbird Robotics Kit. And I'll show you one more. This teacher, oh, it could have been Miss Muffet. Oh, that's a good guess. There are a surprising number of nursery rhymes that have to do with spiders. I'm not sure how spiders got that good spot. Um, but here is a teacher that is showing her analysis and her understanding of Still I Rise by Maya Angelou. And I want to give you a look at this. We watch the sun changing to the moon here. We see some darkness spinning. As the character falls, it changes the lighting. Here's what the teacher said. My robot poetry project of Still I Rise by Maya Angelou, I focused on playing with dark versus light. Despite the negativity others push onto her, she still rises in positivity of self. Used motors, LED buttons, and the distance sensor. A pretty incredible way to describe your analysis of a poem in less than 180 characters. <laughs> and that is because that robotic interpretation really speaks a thousand words, I think. One more example, Robot Shakespeare. 
These students created a diorama of a scene from Romeo and Juliet to show how well they understood the text. I'm going to see if I can skip forward a little bit for you. This is challenging without sound, but hopefully you're seeing that light through yonder window is breaking. It is the east and Juliet is the sun. Here we have a pretty epic sword fight. Really shows the excitement of that scene. So every student is bringing their scene to life in a totally different way using the Hummingbird Robotics Kit. All right, we have made it to recess. So I think everybody could probably use a break. I have hit you with a lot of content very quickly. So I'm gonna ask you to take some time to chat. If you follow this link or if you scan this QR code, it will take you to a Google Jamboard. And this Google Jamboard has a few questions on it. I'm going to give you about three or four minutes to look through. If you've never used a Google Jamboard before, the question that I'd love for you to think about is in the middle. And you can write a response using the pen. You could add a sticky note and type your response. And there are four questions. I want to know what projects make you excited. I want to know what you're hoping to see and learn in the rest of the session. I would love to know what are the biggest challenges of bringing robotics into the classroom. I know it's not always easy. And what's making you feel inspired? So I'm going to give us about three minutes if you need to use the restroom, if you need to grab some water. Now is a great time to do that. And I'm going to put this recess slide back up so anybody who needs it can get to it. And I'll see you in just a couple minutes. Okay, I'm going to give a one minute warning. This is also a great time to send any questions that you might have to the chat. Questions that you'd either like to talk about at the end or that you'd like to know the answer to now. Also, if you are watching the recording of this session, if you are not with us live today, the great thing about this Google Jamboard is that it's not going anywhere. So you can log on to this Jamboard at any time and you can see what people are thinking what questions they are asking, and you can add your own. Be a part of the conversation, even if you're not here with us this particular Wednesday. If you are typing on the Jamboard, if you are finishing up with anything else, take a few more seconds to finish up and then come back to us. You've got a whole afternoon of classes left to go. All right. After recess, we are going on to music and drama. 
Um, as a former music teacher myself, before I was a librarian, it always warms my heart to see the amazing ways that music teachers incorporate technology into their classes. So here are a few examples of the ways that we have seen STEM and robotics used in music and drama. You could start by studying rhythm with a synchronized finching competition, which I just think is just about the coolest thing ever. These finches, although we can't hear it, are playing a synchronized tune. It is an original composition that the students wrote together. And they have been programmed to be moving synchronously. And they're pretty amazing, aren't they? This is some very exact programming here. If you lean in really close, you can see the code. And this was inspired by one of the text-based programming lessons and challenges on our website. I totally agree, Whitney. I think it is incredible. And as someone who has attempted to synchronize some pitches, I can tell you it is even harder than it looks. So way to go, Miss Tanner, because this is really remarkable. If you wanted to challenge your students to analyze and share a famous musical work, there's an opera bot lesson for that. Unfortunately, it's a little difficult to um, hear the opera without sound, but that's okay. If you are a big opera fan and you recognize this show, La Boheme, then you might be able to guess where this scene is. Hi, Nick. Sorry, we started a little quickly because we had a, we have a lot to get through, but we are looking at examples of opera bots where we use the Hummingbird Robotics Kit in order to bring a scene from an opera to life. Another opportunity for students to get really creative and see STEM and robotics as more than just programming, but programming that's linked with making and getting creative and having these deep and meaningful connections with music and with art. This is on our website if you want to take a closer look at opera bots. You could share a piece of music in a new way with a lip syncing character challenge. This activity was created by one of our super users. And I hope that you will check this out because it really, I can't do it any justice without sound. But this crocodile is hooked up to a sound sensor and with a little bit of extra programming wizardry, it is actually singing along to Elton John's Crocodile Rock and it is fantastic and well worth your time. So if you're interested in creating a lip syncing character, either that looks like a crocodile or looks like a skeleton, or if you go all the way up, that looks like you, our expert who created this lesson, Cecilia Hillway, created a version of herself as a lip syncing character. This lesson has everything that you need here to create one of those. You can express your feelings for music, the way it makes you feel, the way you interact with it, in a new way with a Finch light show. This video was shared. Jen, who is on this call, taught a Python with Finch class this summer, and it was created by one of her students. It was a fully remote class, and this she programmed the robot to play green sleeves. And the robot is dancing and performing a light show to show how she feels about the music. And students can get really into the kind of pyrotechnics of a robotic light show. And it can tell you a lot about how they feel about a piece of music. You could use classical music. You could use a piece that's famously known for going with a certain holiday, like the Nutcracker. Or we had a teacher that told us that her students went crazy creating a light show to a new Adele song. Whatever it is that you think that your students will connect with, creating a light show or a dance party is a great way to give them that freedom and let them really go wild. And to incorporate some extra drama in here, you could give a famous scene new life. This example comes from educator Pan Amendola, who created the beautifully named MacBot. And you might be able to guess, this is bringing Macbeth to life with Finch robots. This is a brilliant collaboration of reading language arts, 
English classics and drama. These students had to really analyze this scene because you can see they truly blocked it out. Every character is reacting the way that they would on the stage, whether the finch is turning away, whether it's lighting up. And what you can't hear is that the students performed and recorded their monologues. So the finches are interacting with each other. And we're hearing the dialogue as the finches move through their stage direction. Such a unique and challenging way to show your mastery of a scene. And I could just watch it all day. All right. Time for science class. Science like math, we have so many examples that we can show you that it is very challenging to narrow it down, but I'm going to show you just a few, starting with two of our most popular lessons for the Hummingbird Robotics Kit, amusement park physics and mini golf. And those are exactly what they sound like, challenging students to create their own amusement park rides out of recycled craft materials by working to understand the physics of how they work. We've got a cookie monster swing here. What happens to those swings when cookie monster turns? How do you get the rotational servo to turn at the right speed and angle so that people are nervous but don't get hurt? What does it look like to build a ride that can go through that much centrifugal force without falling apart? So in amusement park physics, in our project page, we've got lots of different ideas and information also some standards information and some inspiration pictures of students that have created amusement park rides in the past. And if you're interested in seeing this one in real life, we get lots of these shared on our social media and watching the excitement as students show off their amusement park rides is really incredible. So we've got challenges here, a pendulum ride, a centripetal ride, a swing ride, different options for you to work through. This is obviously just a starting point. You can go anywhere that your creativity can take you. Mini golf is something that we also see taking all sorts of new life on teachers from social media. Here we've got some students playing through their mini golf holes. This one's got a challenge attached to it. You've got to go through those doors as they're open. We're walking through this course. Oh, okay. As someone who's not a stellar mini golfer, I do not think that I would want to be up against that Ferris wheel one. I don't think I would stand much of a chance to get a hole in one. This one looks a little bit like ski ball. But I don't know whether you are imagining your students playing through mini golf courses or you playing through mini golf courses, but either way, you cannot lose with that super fun activity and really all you need is cardboard cardboard and maybe a golf ball or a ping pong ball and you can bring it to life if you're interested in exploring different animal behaviors you can look into biomimicry with your students with the turk biomimetics curriculum which they created and released last year using the hummingbird robotics kit and there are two different ways to enjoy this curriculum. There is a standalone lesson that allows you to just do a day or two of biomimicry with the hummingbird robot. And they also offer a completely free curriculum that has 15 sessions and really allows you to dive into creating a robot that mimics an animal's behavior, what biomimicry means. And students are creating a robot that could help save people who are trapped during a natural disaster, which is something that naturally problem solving and empathetic students are really interested in. So if you've ever been teaching about animal behavior or biomimicry, this is a wonderful resource that's available for free from Turk. There's also an animal adaptations with Finch project where you're looking at animal behavior, but from a slightly different angle. How do you need to adapt your Finch's behavior so that it acts like an animal? What if that animal is missing a limb? What if they get moved to a new habitat? What adaptations would they need to survive? By programming your Finch and creating a little costume for it, like this shark fin or the jellyfish tentacles, you're able to get creative. Think empathetically, think like problem solvers, and think like scientists. 
How do animals behave and how do I recreate that with my code? You could show some mastery with scientific models and these do kind of speak for themselves. I'm going to show you a human body systems model at work. Got some lights and some motors here bringing these to life. So cool. Here are some robotic joints working together, made with the Hummingbird Robotics Kit. You can see that these are all attached to project pages that have resources for in order for you to recreate this in your own classroom anytime. Or here's another example of a scientific model. This one is a chemical reaction in progress. I can't think of a single high, stu high school student that wouldn't love the sentence, then you add fire. Just think that would get just about everybody excited. So if you follow us on social media or have ever looked through our project page, you know that this is really just a small sampling of our science lessons. It is one of our strongest subject. So if you are interested in incorporating robotics into science, I suggest you take a look or write to us because we would love to share our resources with you. All right. Our last class of the day before we head back to homeroom, art and design. Challenge your students to recreate a famous piece of artwork or music with the moving masterpieces lesson. What I love about this lesson is that so many of our different lessons and activities, it can be as simple or as complex as you'd like. Some of these projects really only feature one or two robotic or engineering components, just blinking LEDs or just a servo that moves back and forth. Some of them get much more complex by interacting with a sensor and using that input to change behavior. but because students were inspired to create artwork based on an artist that they love, they all look really impressive, don't they? So every student, whether they shine in programming and computer science, or whether they see themselves as more of an artist and are more comfortable behind a canvas, they all have the chance to shine with this lesson. And students who maybe didn't see themselves as programmers before, or who have never seen themselves as artists, have a chance to step outside of their comfort zone and try something new. You could dig into the design thinking process with our design thinking and robotics lesson. You can click on that, but I'm watching our clock and I want to be respectful of your time. There's no video there, so I'm going to keep moving. Using the Finch's marker holder, you could explore drawing shapes with Finch. We know that's available at all levels. There's also, if you click on that lesson, students were studying Mondrian art. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, which is an artist that drew different pieces of art with shapes. And you can be creating different artwork and sequences. This beautiful snowflake shape was made by our product coach, Jen, who's on the call. Um, it challenges students to look at shapes a new way and to take something simple, make the code a little more complicated and create something truly beautiful. If you're challenging students to really think things through and design, creating a maze is a very cool way to do that. Design an amazing maze to stump classmates using any programming language in 2D or 3D. So here we have a 2D maze that students are programming their way through using Python. So we've got a pretty low floor in terms of building the maze. It's just tape on the floor. But the programming is pretty high because they're using text-based programming, Python. That would take a while. 
Now, if you wanted to swap those, you could create a 3D maze. Using, of course, you have the victory dance at the end, obviously. Um, you could create a 3D maze using cardboard or different projects from around your classroom and program your way through it with icon-based programming. Totally customizable depending on what it is that your students and your classroom need. But a maze never gets old. A maze or an obstacle course can be something new and exciting every single time. All right, we've made it through our whole day and you have got a jam-packed take-home folder with lots of different resources for you to look through. I'm not going to click on any of these. I'm just going to talk you through them very quickly. We have oodles of free professional development just waiting for you on our website. This was designed for teachers by teachers. So it is not just going to tell you how to use these robots, but it's going to give you information about how to teach computational thinking, how to challenge your students to think about what a robot is. This professional development is totally free. It's available anytime. You can do it in your pajamas at home or with your favorite teammates at work. It's always there for you if you'd like to give it a try. We have start teaching pages that give you all the resources you need to get started with Finch and Hummingbird. And while I'm here talking about our robots, because those are the ones that I know best, so many of these ideas can be used with whatever robot or robotic components you have in your classroom. So if you don't have our robots, don't let that limit you. Use any of these activities as inspiration. It is all about getting your students engaged and excited and sparking that deep and joyful hands-on learning, no matter what tools you're using. If you'd like to get to know our tools, we have a completely free 60-day demo. You can follow this link right now and request a demo to try a Finch free for 60 days in your classroom. Take it home. Try it with your students. Try it with your kids. Try it on your own. See if it's a good fit for you. You can browse inspiration through our Finch activities, our Hummingbird Simple Builds, and our projects. You saw a lot of those today. We have a blog that showcases new and exciting resources called the Birdhouse blog. There's the link. We don't want finances to be a barrier for you. If you're interested in trying out robotics, we have a full page on grant assistance that can help you get what you need. Follow us on social media. Join the conversation on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Join our educators community on Facebook where we have innovative and really, really friendly, talented educators from around the world sharing ideas and asking questions. And finally, join our mailing list to get all of the information about what is happening at Bird Brain. It is a newsletter once a month, and I really think you'd enjoy it. So I have talked your ear off for a full hour. What questions do you have? Them. Thanks so much for being here. I hope you found something that excited or inspired you to bring STEM and robotics into a new class.